by the power of God's love. Amen? Amen. You know what? When all else fails, when all else fails, rely on that. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. All right. So I don't know about you, but I love the reading from today. I'm just going to give you a heads up. This is one of those passages that I will nerd out on. I'm just going to tell you. I'm just going to tell you. That I, have, I have not changed the words. Uh, people know that, yes, we inclusify at times or make things that are a little bit more um, we can relate to. I did not change a word out of this translation. And it's very similar to many translations of Proverbs nine. And so, but what does Lady Wisdom have to do with Jesus? A lot. But let me tell you this. So, one of the things about Christianity for me is that I have felt for a very long time that we weren't told the whole story. Amen? Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, um, editing what one has access to is not a new phenomenon. <laughs> Over time, our faith in Jesus himself has become sterilized, cleaned up, whitened up, buffed up, over-masculinized, and in some places and in some times, lost the fact that he even had a mama. Why do I mean that by that? As I've said here before, many times raised Catholic, and we always said the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And when I was like, knee high to I'm like, where's mom? It was before divorce was an in thing. Right? So he even got to lose his mother. The result is, is I believe we have been taught only a part of the story. His life has been distilled down to just one very important part of his life. But in the teachings of Christianity, for the most part, you just know that he, quote, died for my sins. Important. But it's so much more than that. In fact, he didn't teach about his death. He taught about his life. He taught about how you and I should live our lives. He taught about his Abba and his Ama, his mommy and daddy. And he truly, truly wanted us to live a life that was closer to the divine than we have even known. He actually, how did he do it? I think uh, one of the ways, one of the things that I would describe is he was the Martha Stewart of his time. <laughs> Sacrilege from the pulpit. No, not that. <laughs> truly, truly, he was a holy hostess. Amen? Right. He really was a holy hostess. He, I would have him do our hospitality hour any day of the week. <laughs> Sorry, Landon. <laughs> See, he knew that God's table was never too small. He knew that all you had to do, I, I, I might date myself here, but does anybody remember when a holiday came along and your table all of a sudden, your dining room table all of a sudden became a lot bigger? <laughs> because mom hid the leaves of the table. And if you were lucky enough, you got the job of putting those leaves in the table and get with, and your brother closing it and while your finger was in there. And, okay, all right, that's another story. <laughs> but Jesus knew that all that had to happen is to find those leaves and put them in the table. Because God's table is never too small. Never too small. He has always known and taught that there is no one that is greater than the other. And when we think and if we think we have uh, the haves and the haves not, not the have, the haves and the haves nots, <laughs> the rich and the poor in this country or around the world, it was nothing, nothing compared to the time that he lived in. <laughs> there was a small 
read it, small group of people who ruled and who had all the bennies. The majority of people were either enslaved, indentured, peasants, or dirt poor. Amen? There wasn't even a middle class. You either had it, or you lorded it over everybody. And it was in that environment that he came and he taught, and he brought hope, and he brought a message to his people and those are in the surrounding area, so powerful that it is still relevant to you and me today. Amen? It is still relevant to you and me today. He had more stories that he taught. He taught more stories surrounding food than just about anything else. We hear about that he's the bread of life, cup of wisdom. And what's that all about? We talked last week and the last couple weeks about bread and yeast. That heaven is like bread and ye- bread and yeast. Excuse me. Mustard seed and yeast in the bread. <laughs> and the thing about the bread and the thing about wine, which he used a lot of is they both have in it an agent to allow fermentation to grow, to become more than the individual parts. And wisdom, I believe, he shared with us to be our transformative, our transformative agent, if you will. Where he poured himself into us, where he asked us to pour Lady Wisdom, into us so that we could grow beyond our means and become something greater. But he didn't, he didn't just get born this way and know all this stuff. And it's not just because he ran off at 12 years old and went to go be in the synagogue as the story tells us. <laughs> when, when Calix gets 12 years old, do not let him run off. <laughs> Do not let him run off. I, just, I read that story even when I was a youngster and I read that story. I'm like, oh my God, where did he go? What did his parents? I could see his mom. Right? He didn't just even get it from the synagogue. He was raised in a tradition of Lady Wisdom, of the Hokma tradition. You say again, well, what is that about? I've never heard about that. There's a whole bigger part that I only get 20 minutes, so you won't get to hear it. <laughs> but if you want even more fabulous nerd out stuff, let me know. I'll email it to you. <laughs> or make copies and give it to you. But see, Lady Wisdom, you know, it wasn't just, this is where I said we only get taught part of the story. Did you know, first of all, there's more than one creation story in Scripture? Mm-hmm. Been around here, you know that. But in Proverbs 8 and 9, Proverbs 8 and 9, we hear another part of the creation story. And we find out that it wasn't just Yahweh who was doing the creating. It wasn't just, quote, God the Father doing the creating. He had a companion. And her name, her name was Hochma, Lady Wisdom. Greeks call her Sophia. She was with him at creation. Sometimes they look at it as God the Father, the Creator. It's kind of the logical one. And Lady Wisdom, well, she was chaos. (laughs) Hallelujah, because baby, birthing is nothing less than chaos. Right? And the two, it is said, created and went after. Part of their creation was bringing light into the world. Who has been called the light of the world? Jesus. It takes two to tango, and baby makes three. Amen? Amen. Jesus came from the creation of the divine feminine and divine masculine coming together to teach the world about coming back to God's table. 
Jesus was a both and. He truly, he truly embodied what we today and then would call the woman's work. Right? Washing the feet, setting the table, inviting the guests. Wow, he was both and, male and female. I think he's an amazing example for men as well as women in this world. But besides being a holy hostess, he also, I believe, came to do a few other things. He came to heal relationships. He came to teach about reconciliation and most of all about redemption. He, in all of his teachings, said, here's how you can heal your relationships. It is important to heal them, not only the relationship that you have with yourself. Does anybody need to heal the relationship they have with themselves? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Or to heal relationships with one another over and over again. And Lady Wisdom told us a thing or two. I love it. I'm going to kick you in your shins. <laughs> Ooh, just like mama talking. <laughs> right? He came to teach about healing and relationships. He also taught, came to teach about reconciliation, about reconciling our brokenness in the world, to reconcile the, 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 those on the, we would call it the other side of the aisle, right? To reconcile so that we can come together and all feast with God. Amen? To then, most of all, yes, he did come to teach us about redemption. We hear to redeem us from our sins. Another way to say that is to redeem us, to bring us back into wholeness for those things that separate us from God. That is what sin is, right? Doesn't have to be a scary word. And people use it as a bludgeon and a hammer. And it's not what it's about. To be redeemed means to be brought back into wholeness. To find out the ways to get rid of the things that have gotten in the way. What's gotten in your way? What's gotten in your way? Doubt. Doubt. Self-hatred. Self-hatred. Thinking, mm. thinking. <laughs> that incorporates a lot of things. Oppression. Oppressing. Hating, sickness. being hated, sickness, trauma. Mm -hmm. It's these things that separate us. So how can we just sit in and dwell in and find the healing in the presence of God? He came to heal the divisions between one another, to mend the wounds, to feed body and soul, to welcome the stranger, to live a wisdom-filled life, and to remind us, don't waste your time in life. And most of all, he came to show us that you too can be transformed. Amen? You too can be transformed, and there is no one, nothing, no message that can hinder that. And so it is that we come to hear from, I'm going to call it his great, great, great grandmother, Lady Wisdom. And I'm going to share with you actually Proverbs 8, so just bear with me because I love this passage and I want you to just really hear it, feel it, and embody it. Do you hear Lady Wisdom calling? Can you hear Madame Insight raising her voice? She's taken her, fur, her stand at first in Maine, at the busiest intersection. I want you to see that. Can you see the busiest and most crazy part of your life? Can you see Lady Wisdom? Can you see God standing there? Think about it. You captured it? You got it? Right there, all the craziness. There she is. There he is, right in the city square where the traffic is this thickest, and she shouts the I-5. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, did I want to shout or what today? You, I'm talking to all of you, everyone out here on the streets, listen. 
Listen, you idiots. <laughs> oh, that's only a mama can say. <laughs> Don't ever say that. <laughs> Learn good sense, you blockheads. Shape up. I love it. <laughs> this is from the message translation, by the way. <laughs> Don't, I love to pick translations where we can really hear the message. Don't miss a word of this. I am telling you how to live well. I'm telling you how to live at your best. My mouth chews and savors and relishes truth. Do you taste it? I can't stand the taste of evil. You'll only hear true and right words from my mouth. <laughs> Not one syllable will be twisted or skewed. You'll recognize this as true. You with open minds, truth, ready minds will see at once. When I read these words, I just want to cry. <laughs> this is God's love letter to us. This is God's love letter to you. Prefer my life disciplines over chasing after money and God knowledge over a lucrative career. Not that careers and money are bad, okay? But get your priorities right. For wisdom is better than all the trappings of wealth. Nothing you could wish for stands a candle to her. I am Lady Wisdom and I, I live next to sanity. <laughs> knowledge and discretion live just down the street. The awe of God means hating evil, whose ways I hate with a passion. Pride and arrogance and crooked talk. Friends, if we find that creeping into our head, that stinking thinking, put it behind us. Good counsel and common sense are my characteristics. Okay, we can work on it. <laughs> I am both insight and the virtue to live it out with my help, leaders rule, and lawmakers legislate fairly. With my help, governors govern along with all in legitimate authority. I love those who love me. Those who look to me, find me. Wealth and glory accompany me, also substantial honor and fame. My benefits are worth more than a big salary. Even a very big salary. <laughs> the returns on me exceed any imaginable bonus. You can find me on Righteous Road. That's where I walk at the intersection of Justice Avenue handing out life to those who love me, filling their arms with life, arm loads of life. God sovereignly made me the first, the basic, before he did anything else. It is right there in scripture. I was brought into being a long time ago, well before earth got its start. I arrived on the scene before ocean, yes, even before springs and rivers and lakes, before mountains were sculpted and hills took shape. I was already there, newborn. Long before God stretched out Earth's horizons and tended to the minute details of soil and weather and set sky firmly in place, I was there. And when he mapped and gave borders to wild ocean, built the vast vault of heaven and installed the fountains that fed ocean, when he drew a boundary for sea, posted a sign that said no trespassing, and then staked out Earth's foundation, I was right there with him, making sure everything fit. Of course she did. <laughs> day after day, I was there. I was there. with my joyful applause, always enjoying his company. It continues on. Make a life of discipline and live wisely. Don't squander your precious life. This is a message to you and me. Blessed be the man, the woman, the child who listens to me. Awake and ready for me each morning. Alert and responsive as I start my day's work. When you find me, you find life, real life, to say nothing of God's good pleasure. This is yours. This is yours. 
the gifts given to Jesus that he gave to you and me. We live in a lineage. And you and I are part of this lineage. To embrace all of what I read and more. To heal those parts of yourself that are needing healing. To feel joyful in those places and to hope and to know that there is a better day even when we are broken inside with angst. Pursue wisdom and set the table. I hear often, the world's falling apart, what do we do? We're so divided. And I think back to, do you remember those wristbands, WWJ Day? What would Jesus do? I just realized, what would Jesus do? Jesus would say, come on, let's eat. And invite you to the table. And invite you to the table. And while you're, invite, while you're at it, invite the person who you don't really want at the table with you. Amen. All right? <laughs> and if you're good enough, dessert might follow. That's it. <laughs> dessert might follow. I end with this, and I thank you for taking the time to listen. To those without sense, wisdom says, come and eat my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. And Rumi reminds us, yesterday I was clever, so I wanted to change the world. Today I am wise, so I am changing myself. Live a life fully immersed in the love of God, in the arms of Lady Wisdom, walking with Jesus by your side. And I promise the banquet the banquet will be more than you ever, ever imagined. Amen? Amen.